Hello, I'm John Yorkin with GE Analytical Instruments, and I wanted to briefly share how we are helping companies move on from solubility when it comes to cleaning validation. Solubility has been the most common objection for the use of total organic carbon analysis for cleaning validation or verification studies for years because of the traditional product-specific focus that is built into existing cleaning programs. The unfortunate thing for customers with this objection is they have a tendency to over-design cleaning programs that are overly effective but very inefficient. To solve this problem, you first need to get comfortable with cleanability. But what is this term cleanability? It is the combination of critical process parameters and measurement tools to ensure minimal product carryover of target compounds in the next batch of product that will be produced. Although every compound in a drug formulation has a relative solubility, it also has an inherent cleanability. Just so you know, legacy solubility approaches have previously worked primarily because typical cleaning cycles are based on theoretical scenarios with little understanding about the actual process. This is a great approach for analytical methods and sampling, but costly for cleaning and manufacturing processes. Just because a reference manual like the Merck Index indicates a compound is insoluble in water doesn't mean that it can be cleaned effectively. And this manual doesn't take into account when a compound changes dissolves or degrades during the cleaning process. But did you know for the past 15 years, more and more pharmaceutical manufacturers are moving away from solubility as the guiding light for cleaning validation? Solubility is important, but not a solution. Some are finding success by changing their thinking and focus to cleanability. That means that the cleanability of the potential compounds or residues affects how well one will design a process using critical parameters called TACT, that will be measured by a non-product specific method like TOC. TAC stands for temperature, action, cleaning agent concentration, and time. This term is known as the magic formula for any cleaning process. So the harder the residue is to clean, the higher the anticipated residue that may be left over on the surface of the equipment. When this is the case, the magic formula needs to be adjusted based on cleanability and not solubility or TOC percent recovery. This is hard for some to accept. For example, some may perform a percent recovery study of an insoluble compound with TOC and find that the method can only recover half of the expected value, thus triggering a series of events that would impact established processes and procedures. They would then label TOC as a poor method and not suitable for the intended use. It's easy to dismiss TOC in this case, but before you go down this path, it might be a good idea to rethink the approach. What if you performed a cleanability study that involves tact rather than TOC solubility recovery? You might find very little correlation between the solubility of the compound with TOC and its cleanability when comparing the TOC results. Understanding cleanability involves accepting that there are a variety of tact factors that influence the removal of the compound from the equipment. The key is finding the most significant tact parameters that will provide the lowest TOC results by swab and rinse sampling. Try this test for yourself. Select five to 10 worst case compounds based on historical solubility data. With these compounds, perform what is called a bench scale simulation test as shown in the picture. This test includes simulating tack conditions to remove the worst case compound from the surface of the test piece. Once the test piece looks clean, let it dry. Once it's dry, perform TOC swab or rinse sampling. And when you get the TOC results, compare these to your acceptance criteria established for TOC. This would tell you how cleanable your compounds are. If the TOC samples are indicating higher than expected results, then adjust your tact and not your acceptance criteria limits. Data from these studies are very cost effective and powerful for cleaning programs. They also explain why compounds can behave equally with regard to cleanability, even if they have different solubility. This ensures that your cleaning program will be robust, consistent, and defendable. In addition, this type of test can streamline TOC implementation for cleaning validation programs, or if you're adding new products or compounds to your facility, formulations, or processes. So it's okay to move on from solubility and adopt cleanability. It's in our nature to be resistant to adopt this new way of thinking because it will require change. And change requires gathering data, analyzing the data, and discussing the opportunity with others. But understand that if others in the industry are doing this, it's their competitive advantage, and they might not be that forthcoming with information. Please understand that solubility has its place in cleaning validation. It can help in risk assessments and theoretical discussions in the design phase. But there are bigger factors that impact cleaning, not just solubility. 
And finally, in an ordinary world, the best analytical method for cleaning validation could be used, but in this world of cost pressures and potential process improvements, product-specific methods may be limited by practical considerations. Really, it's okay to move on with TOC, because with this new approach, it is important not that TOC is the best method available, but that it is adequate and useful measurement tool for determining cleanability.